Last week, we discussed the basics of starting with Amazon advertising. So this week, we're moving forward and discussing the next best steps. If you have some experience with running Amazon ads, then you'll want to tune in today as we discuss the best practices and give you a practical step-by-step -step tutorial of what you need for running successful Amazon advertising campaigns using sponsored product ads with manual targeting, of course. Uh, hey, while we're kind of talking about things here, I just want to get this out the way because, boy, we've got a lot to unpackage here. But uh, keep in mind, this is a three-part series, so you're going to want to make sure you stay tuned to this podcast so you can really get all of what I want to talk about when it comes to Amazon advertising. Learn how to publish books and build your author business with award-winning author and self-publishing consultant, Dale L. Roberts. This is the Self-Publishing with Dale podcast. Enter for your chance to win a premium design package by Miblar and a spotlight in a future video when you visit dailinks.com slash giveaway. This third part in a four part series with Miblar culminates in a premium cover design valued at over a $700. So if you missed the deadline for this giveaway, by the way, you can enter the next giveaway in the series when you visit the link of dailinks.com slash giveaway. And for all your graphic design needs, use Miblart, save 10% off when you use Dale 10 and visiting my affiliate link of dailinks.com slash Miblart. All right, so we got that out the way. Hopefully you've already entered. Uh, by the way, you can enter daily. And this is this is pretty cool. And I, I'm looking forward to whoever wins this very next one. Now, uh, previously on the podcast, we discussed the best first step for creating and managing sponsored ads with automated targeting. Now, once you've had some experience running automatic targeting ads, you can give manual targeting a shot. Now, I'll discuss how automated targeting and manual targeting works best together later on into the podcast because we need to kind of lay the foundation. Now, why do we want to do manual targeting for sponsored product ads? Uh, with automated targeting, you're giving Amazon more control on where your ad appears. Oftentimes, you'll have to weed out the bad targets while running an automated targeting campaign. This means you'll spend money on some targets that have nothing to do with your book. You really don't have any choice. It's automatic. They're just going to throw it in there and be like, do you want your ad for this? No, I don't. And so you got to clearly tell them those type of things. Now with manual targeting, you are in control and decide where your ad appears and how much you're willing to pay. Now having this control means you spend less money on irrelevant targets. Now, of course, there are some exceptions to the rule, and I'm going to talk about one of those here in a little bit. I, I know this is an audio-focused podcast, so I'll do my best to walk you through the current steps for setting up a manual targeting campaign for sponsored products. Now, just keep in mind that, you know, you may have to follow along. If you're watching on the video version of this, thank you so much. Unfortunately, you're going to have to just use your imagination on this one here. Now, manual targeting for sponsored product ads. What you're going to start out with is hit create campaign and then choose the sponsored product option. Ignore the other two options of sponsored brand and lock screen ads. Uh, I'm going to discuss that next week. For ad format, keep it simple and choose a standard ad. Now, this displays your ad with just your book. For custom text ads, you have to do copywriting to attract sales. And if you're anything like me, you might not have the insights or patience to craft the best copy. So, I mean, I could probably lean on a couple of experts and maybe I can just guess my way through it. But, you know, I just skipped that option, especially since it's only available in the U.S. at the time of this recording. Yeah, so any other regions outside of the U.S., you're not getting that custom text ad. So that just kind of indicates to me that if it's running successfully in other regions as a standard ad, why change it over in the U.S.? Now, the next step is naming your ad group. As mentioned in the previous broadcast, you want to choose a naming convention that helps you remember what the campaign is at a glance. For me, I use like one word or abbreviation for my book title. I put the ad type and then I date it. Once you have this campaign launched, you'll be able to add more ad groups under that campaign. So don't be afraid if you're like, oh, but I want to do another ad group right now. Just wait for them to approve it and then you can add some more in there. Now, I keep my campaign separated by the type, strategy, and the books that I'm advertising. Once I have a number of ads up, I'll put all the campaigns related to one book or a series in a portfolio to keep things well organized. Because as you can imagine, you're going to start to build up a lot of ads over the years. Now, next up, you'll need to find your book 
or enter its ASIN or ISBN. Select only one book. This is my recommendation. You can do more, but to be honest with you, uh, I usually run two different ad groups based on the product type, whether ebook, paperback, or hardcover. I used to just throw all three of them into there, but I found that one of them would convert better than the other, and the other two would just kind of just drag down the ad spend. So I found it much better just to kind of keep them separated. So that way, if I saw one that wasn't performing really well, it wasn't affecting that one. So let's say my ebook version starts to sell like crazy, but for whatever reason, my hardcover version is just burning through money. Maybe it sells here and there. Having that hardcover variation inside the ebook version is going to get it to where it's dropping down the conversion conversion rate. We want to make sure we keep that conversion rate up as best as possible because that means it's going to be served more people and hopefully you'll get more sales. Now, if you mix all those together, it becomes a bit messy, as you can imagine, since some ad types convert better than others, as I'd mentioned. It's better to identify those issues separately so you can pause a poor performing ad group. Now, next up is where you choose the manual targeting, which includes keywords or products. Now, for keyword targeting, Amazon will serve your ad in front of shoppers who have a used a keyword related to your target keyword, whether it's a broad match, phrase match, meaning the target keyword is within a search keyword, and an exact match where a shopper has served your ad when they type the exact targeted keyword. Pretty easy to remember, right? Those three keyword match types have good, better, and best model to them where the broad match is the least expensive, phrase match is a bit more, and exact matches are the most expensive when it comes to bidding uh, for your cost per click. Now, I separate out keyword campaigns based on match types, but you're welcome to mix them up. It'll just take a little longer to audit them from one week to the next. Now, Amazon will suggest some keywords to use, but I stress caution. Not all the keywords they suggest are relevant. Some of them are just downright goofy. Has anybody ever seen book, book, book? No. No, thank you. That just makes zero sense. Book, book, book. It just put books three times and uh, magically it's going to be put in front of my target audience. Pass. Thanks. And even though they suggest a bid for a specific target, doesn't mean you have to go with it. You're able to change the bid from the default suggested bid to custom bid or default bid, of course. Even though you're allowed to have up to 1,000 keywords, I recommend limiting it to about 100 or less. Then as the campaign matures, you can add more targets and gain more traction and remove some targets that aren't performing as well as you would have liked them to. If you don't have any keywords already, I highly recommend picking up a copy of Publisher Rocket. It's my preferred keyword research tool for Amazon ads. Simply do a basic search in Rocket and it'll spit out a ton of targets for you to choose from. Now, I'm a bit more anal retentive because I'll still sift through the list that Rocket gives to me. I find my campaigns perform better when I weed out any irrelevant keywords. Now, get access to Publisher Rocket when you visit my affiliate link at dailylinks.com rocket. As per usual, all the links are going to be in the show notes. Oh, and to save you time, Rocket even gives you recommendations for product targeting, which perfectly segues back to this option. Now, we'll move forward on the campaign setup here in a few minutes because we do need to discuss product targeting. Now, for product targeting, you can have your ads serve to shoppers based on a product like a competitor's book or entire categories. Now, the categories feature is nice, but a little goes a long way. When you use categories, you're telling Amazon you want your ads served in front of any books in that category, and this can be in the thousands. Now, how many categories should you select? I'd recommend limit it to one, but if you do select more than one, be mindful of how many products are in a given category. Amazon advertising typically gives you an approximate range of products and titles in a given category, so you can make more of an informed decision. Now, you'll have to weed out books irrelevant to yours as the campaign starts to pick up traction. As you can imagine, Amazon's categorization system isn't perfect. So some books get placed in the wrong category, whether intentional or not. And though it has 
nothing to do with your book, if you select that category, you're stuck with advertising anything that's in it. This is where you'll want to check your search terms report from daily to weekly. Now, I stick with checking my ads every Thursday morning. It's like clockwork. I get up. That's the first thing that I do every single Thursday. Now, I'll identify any irrelevant or poor converting product targets and then place them into the negative targeting at the campaign level. Now, I mentioned this little trick last week, but I'm going to mention it this time. You've got the campaign level ads. That's kind of like the umbrella that you can place numerous ad groups underneath them. So this means different types of ads go into this campaign level. If we use the negative targeting at the ad group level, it will only affect that specific ad group. So if I start up another ad group underneath that campaign level, what ends up happening is it starts from scratch and you're going to end up having to pay for targeting that's irrelevant that you may have already paid for before. So if you start a new ad group in that campaign, I just recommend, I won't pay twice for the bad targets. So I always take and I put those negative targeting at the campaign level, not at the group level. So this means when you go into the campaign, and you see all the ad groups, you'll see negative targeting on the left side. Now, what is the best of the three options? Now this varies. Keywords work really well for me, whereas product targeting works better for others. You just have to experiment to find out what works best for your individual book. Yes. That means you should treat each book differently based on the type of book it has. So if you're a multi-genre author, your ad campaign strategy needs to be different based on the niche. So even though let's say that I'm a fitness author and also I write about books about self-publishing, I'm not going to take those other books and put them into the same ad campaign because it makes zero sense and it'll just mess everything up. Not worth it. Try to keep everything in the similar area. Now for the campaign bidding strategy, I recommend sticking to dynamic bids down or fixed bids when you're setting up your campaign bidding strategy. Now with dynamic bid down, um, the Amazon, Amazon will decrease your bid based on their perception of whether or not the ad will convert. Now, it's kind of nice, but in a certain extent, they're going to drop it down so you might lose a bid because it goes too low. Now, with fixed bids, that's not true. You're telling Amazon you don't want to pay any more than what you had suggested for a bid and not to mess around with your bid, even if they think it won't convert as well. Now, once you get to the bottom of your ad setup, you'll need to name your ad campaign. It's the same naming convention I use for the ad group level as mentioned before. Now, don't overthink it. Just name it something that's memorable for you so you can recall it at a quick glance. Now, feel free to add this ad to a portfolio. As I mentioned before, I keep one publication or series inside a portfolio. Now, do you need a portfolio? No. Now, it just helps you kind of keep things organized, to be honest with you. Now, after that, you can set an end date. Now, for me, I never put up an end date. But if you do that, make sure you're checking back on your ads on a daily, if not weekly basis. If you're new to this stuff, I would recommend daily. So that way, you know, you're not overspending. And by the way, I did have a viewer more recently bring up, and this is not to throw her under the bus or anything, that uh, she put her um, daily budget up to about $4,100 uh, because uh, she was led to believe that that would increase the number of sales. Uh, but unfortunately, in instances like that, I do not recommend putting your budget up so high that you can't afford it on a daily basis. Uh, keep it reasonable. Uh, don't listen to any old practices of, well, just increase it up to a thousand. They're not going to spend that much as long as you keep your cost per click that low. Well, trust me, there's been times where they've burned some people. So be very careful. Now, set the end date. That's where I was going off on a tangent here. If you have a very tight budget, then you'll want to put in an end date of some sort. So let's say, for instance, that you only have $300 over the next month. Well, you're going to want to make sure you put an expiration date at about 30 days out so you know that it's not going to be taking any more than 300 bucks out of your bank account. Uh, so for me, I never put an end date. I've heard some people have some superstitious methods where they put an end date because it's going to help out with relevance and it's going to serve out your ad. That's not true. It's not even something that's within the Amazon advertising certification course that is even, you know, promoted. For me, I check my ads 
every week again. So if I have to pause the campaign, I'll know pretty much weeks ahead because you'll see when a campaign's not taking off or when it's slowing down. For setting your daily budget, Amazon recommends starting at $10 per day. But if you're a bit more cash strapped, start with where you're at. Go something a little bit lower. I think the lowest you can go is a dollar per day. Now, just a fair warning though. Again, setting an absurdly low CPC and daily budget will lead to a stagnant ad campaign. So if you are going too low, what's the opposite end of the spectrum of us trying to go too high? Um, when we go that too low, you see that it's not getting in impressions and it's getting very few clicks. Chances are very likely you're going to need to kick up your cost per click if you're not getting any impressions. And if you're not getting very many clicks and it's not converting to sales, then chances are likely you're going to need to kick up your daily budget a little bit more so you can reach more people. You will eventually have to increase the budget. It's just a fact. Every ad has to have some type of an increase. And the CPC, if it's not getting any clicks or sales, remember, kick it up. It's going to be not much. I mean, you know, one cent to as much as five cents cost per click. Now, once you're set, hit the launch campaign. Right away, they'll email you that your ad campaign is being moderated. And then shortly after, they'll confirm your ad has been moderated, which is a good thing, by the way. Being moderated is their way of saying they're making sure your ad isn't violating any guidelines. So it's a good thing. I used to freak out when I initially see it. Now, let's go through a practical sequence here because I've given you a lot of information all at once. What I would recommend is start out with running an automated targeting campaign. Now, you're going to have that run for at least two to three months. And during that time, you're going to want to make sure that you're taking a snapshot of 30 days at a time, your search terms report. We want to see exactly what's going on in there. So collect up to three months worth. Use that information to start a manual campaign. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to separate out the campaign based on your strategy, keyword targeting or product targeting. Now, from there, you can run a manual targeting campaign. Now, what you're going to do is take those search term report and anything that was poorly converting or even anything at the campaign level that's in the negative targeting, take that, move it over to your new campaign for manual targeting. So that way it suppresses those and it's not going to be uh, anything for some reason you see that it's going to end up getting added. Like let's say there's a book title in a particular category that automatic targeting ads was bringing up. Well, now you can suppress it for that product targeting ad. Now, as with the automated targeting, with running the manual targeting campaigns, you're still going to want to make sure you take a look at your search terms report daily, if not weekly. I don't go any further than weekly. Suppress any bad targets in the negative targeting tab. Ready for this? At the campaign level, not the group level. I always go at the campaign level. Again, you're going to want to have ad campaigns with separate ad groups for one specific title. You can further organize those campaigns into a portfolio. That way you can jump to one portfolio when you're interested in checking the progress of a single publication. Now, when it comes to running a product targeting campaign with categories, it's similar to running an automated targeting campaign. You'll have to do some weeding out of some bad targets. It's going to happen. Whereas with the keywords one, you could just see the keywords that are being utilized and then break it down from there. All right. Wow. We went through a lot here and I'm going to give you some of my final thoughts and some tips to really make the most of your time on Amazon ads. Now, just a quick reminder that you can still enter. Yes. In the time that you've been listening to me, you could still enter for a chance to win a premium design package by Midblark and a spotlight in a future video. When you visit dalelinks.com slash giveaway, you can enter daily, by the way, to increase your odds of winning. Again, that's dalelinks.com slash giveaway. And a little bit of a tip here. If you do enter that giveaway, make sure that you confirm your entry because if you don't confirm your entry, it's not official. So that means you're going to need to check your inbox for an email from King Sumo. That's the giveaway company that I utilize. If you don't see it in your inbox right as soon as you have entered, then check your spam folder. It's probably there. Now, here are my final thoughts with Amazon ads. Amazon ads works for all authors, no exception but you have to put in the work first. Realistically, it's going to require a budget for you to get any re real results. Easy for me to say, right? I recommend starting at $10 per day if you can afford it. 
If you aren't able to swing it, that's okay. Just temper your expectations with the reality. So if you only got a dollar per day, something's better than nothing. And then I've had some success running dollar ad campaigns per day. Uh, it's not much, but it's something. And it gives you some data that you can start out manual targeting campaigns. Now, no one advertiser is going to sell a boatload of books by simply investing $1 per day in ads. I'm just kind of, kind of put it out there. There's only so much. It's, it's a limitation because if you've got your cost per click, even at 10 cents per, you know, click, then that means you've got about roughly 10 clicks that you can get through before. Well, here we go blown through the daily budget. Now, before you break into manual targeting campaigns here, folks, I highly recommend mastering automated targeting campaigns first. They'll literally give you exactly what you need to run successful manual targeting campaigns with no real guesswork. And one last thing I mentioned in the previous podcast in this series, take the free Amazon advertising certification courses. This goes for any author publishing on Amazon, whether you can afford the ads or not. By simply taking the courses, you're getting an unfair advantage with deeper insights into how the Amazon platform functions. And they're always expanding their educational resources. So go back there and check on it from time to time. I know they just finished up the Amazon Ads Summit not too long ago. Now it's available for replay and separate webinars. So really like that. Hey, uh, stay tuned to this channel for the third part in this series where I discuss why sponsored brand and lock screen ads suck and what you should do instead. Yeah, that's a, that, that's a deep cut right there. I'll be talk, uh, taking a, just a brief vacation next week, we'll, but we'll be back on July 10th on the YouTube channel and, of course, be taking a small break on July 10th for the audio podcast. I will hope to see you then when we can kind of close out this series about Amazon ads. You've been listening to the Self-Publishing with Dale podcast. Visit us at selfpublishingwithdale.com for more information on how you can level up your self-publishing business. Also, check out our growing video-on-demand service, chock full of free and premium content, when you head over to theselfpublishinghub.com. If you enjoyed the show, please consider leaving a review on your preferred podcasting platform. We thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>